So like last time, I'm going to pre-select the colors that I will be working with um, just so I have like a smaller pool of pencil crowns to pick from. I'm seeing a lot of purples in this piece. So I'll pick out all the purpley ones and the pink ones. I really like using this bluish gray color, so I'm gonna take that. All right, um, it's always nerve-wracking to start from a blank page, but I guess here we go. I'll start off with a very light color because I, I want to ease myself into it, you know? Let's see if I really can keep to working in the big shapes down to the little shapes. Hopefully working on getting the tone right first. Here we can see a very distinct shadow side, which is the closest part to us. So every plane facing this way is going to be in shadow. If I can just pretend that these pencil crayons are just like a pencil, then I can probably do them a lot quicker. For me, color is just so distracting. Like having this so monochromatic is just like painful. <laughs> like, like I'm wanting to bring in the redness in her cheeks and the cool that I see um, from the shadows. But I really want to approach this one a little bit differently than I did with the first one and see if I can achieve similar results in the end. Maybe I should just tone the whole thing. Especially on this side. Maybe just leave the highlight on the nose. Yeah. Okay. Time to move on to another color before I go crazy. Maybe some of this pinky color. I need to build up the value on this side, so this might be a bit too dark. Maybe some kind of like beige -y color? I'm seeing some purple in there. Let's bring some purple in. Oh yeah. Okay. 
Okay, that's too orangey. I don't know why. Stay away from the oranges. Stay away. Let's keep this fairly like desaturated for as long as possible. Yeah. Oof. No, it's too too bright. Too bright. Big shapes, big shapes. Big shapes, big forms. Shade the big form. When I did my first photo study walk through thing. Um, I had no idea that it was going to be so well received. A lot of people said that they found it really helpful for them. And um, I found it really interesting how they were literally following my steps in doing them and achieving similar results from it and that was really interesting because I, I didn't intend for that to happen so um yeah I was just surprised <laughs> that people received it so well and found it really helpful speaking of studies I think people generally tend to like my studies over pretty much everything else that I do. At least that's the sense that I get from Instagram. Whenever I have like a sudden burst of growth there, it's usually thanks to the portrait studies that I do. Which I think is very interesting. I think Partly it's due to just the nature of Instagram being that just faces tend to do well because it it's just easier to read from afar and so they just catch people's attention more, I think. Big shapes, big shapes. This blue is coming in really handy. It's a very good blue to like gray things out. Keep this area kind of gray. Oh, maybe it went a little bit too hard there. A little bit too much. A little too quickly. Maybe this is where I bring the turquoise. Oof, no, too much. I got a comment from a very close and trusted friend <laughs> regarding my videos, how she wishes that I could just speak as if I am talking to a friend. And that's been really hard, <laughs> which sucks because I, the whole reason I started YouTube in the first place was because I wanted it to be um, just a place where I share my thoughts and just experiences uh, when it comes to art stuff uh, as freely as I 
would like, but that hasn't been the case. There's definitely this kind of barrier that I can't seem to really get past. Um, yeah, I initially, I think I really wanted to do vlogs because I really enjoy watching vlogs and I don't know, I thought I would be really good at it because when I'm on my own, I tend to talk to myself and like ask myself questions in my head and then answer them out loud, kind of like I'm being interviewed by some kind of a talk show host or something. So I just do that naturally. And so I thought, hey, why not do vlogs because that that's just seems like a natural thing to do because I'm just always talking to myself, uh, talking out loud about the decisions that I'm making and such. But for some reason, when the camera is rolling, I, I can't like string two words together. Like something shifts in my head where I, I just get like blocked which is unfortunate because, I don't know, I think vlogs would be really fun. But at the same time, I think I have other, other things that are preventing me from doing vlogs. I'm really self-conscious about my, the state of my room. <laughs> I find it to be a disaster most of the time. And it's really, for some reason, it's really embarrassing. Like I don't wanna really share that with anyone and have it be something that people can scrutinize. But yeah, my room is always a mess. And I just, I just don't like how my room is organized. When I have to take photos to put on social media, whether it is photos of my art or photos of my products or something. The part that I dread the most is taking, yeah, taking those photos because then I have to like clear my surroundings and clean up my space. And I really hate doing that. And then <laughs> only to like, have it revert back to its original messy state. I don't know, it's just, it's really frustrating. Like I've never been a very organized person. I get a lot of anxiety from my surroundings like constantly. The state of my room says a lot about the state of my mind. That's definitely very true. So I'm gonna, Bring some blue here before I end up getting too dark in this area. Although this blue is kind of dark <laughs> as well. So let's just bring it all, all here. What was I talking about before? Yeah, messy room, messy rooms. Yeah. My room be messy and my desk is messy. And you know what uh, I hate the most is having all these wires on my desk. <laughs> I've never been able to figure out how to like organize all the wires, like chargers and yeah, just a lot of wires everywhere. I don't like it. Maybe let's not leave the eyes for last because that's kind of what I made a mistake on last time. sure about that. Probably just need some layering though.
big shapes, big shapes. Just think about big shapes. Don't get lost in the nuances. Too dark. This is turning out way purplier than I was expecting. I really want to bring some redness right along there. Maybe? I don't know. Here's a nice brown when you need one. Is this a brown? Yeah. yeah, these colors are turning up much more on the red, red scale than I intended. But maybe it's because I'm not using any greens to mute it out. All right, lip time, lips. Am I seeing anything of value in this video? Ugh. I apologize, you guys. Right, let's bring some value into that hair. I'm thinking maybe instead of going really dark, maybe I can suggest it really just like lightly and leave the dark values where I want the focus which is the face let's see if that works actually I need to bring some poiple some poiples in there maybe actually more of a plummy color See how the turquoise looks. Hmm. <laughs> this is very saturated, actually. Is there a less saturated turquoise? This one, I guess. Well, I've made a made my bed, so I will lie in it. Let's get this warmth around the hairline. Too warm though, that's too warm. Maybe not quite so warm. Hopefully this won't be a complete disaster. Ew, it looks a little spacey. The hair looks like galaxy hair, maybe. I think it's funny how sometimes you can tell exactly what color something is and then replicate it like pretty quickly. And then sometimes you need to 
kind of just inch your way close to the color because it's different from what you think you saw because it's all about context and where that color is sitting next to. Yeah, we should avoid using some of the reds. It's too red. Like this looks too orangey to me compared to what I am seeing in the photo. But I don't know if I can really back off of it from now. At this point, I've made my bed. It's, it's already on its way. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Oh, I was saying how my friend told me that as a friend watching my videos, she wishes that I could just talk about stuff as if I'm just talking to a friend. And that's definitely been difficult. I always feel like it's just easier to talk about the artwork and so to like try to talk about something else to try to bring some other topic into the conversation has been a challenge when i set out on doing youtube uh something that i did want to really do was to voice some of the opinions that i have on various art stuff because I have, I think, fairly strong opinions on stuff that maybe people will find relatable or interesting at least. Um, whenever I watch other artists' videos and um, it's about some topic, uh, I find like those ones to be most interesting as well. So. Uh, that's something I've been wanting to do, but like haven't been able to do this whole time I've been on YouTube so far. Um, I feel like I want to stay as open-minded on art stuff as much as possible because I have changed my minds on things um, over time. And so making a video stating my opinion only to like, have that not be my opinion anymore like down the line i feel like something about that terrifies me because it's so it feels so permanent putting it out there on the internet <laughs> and people might take things out of context yeah it's it's just scary to put yourself out there on the internet i just haven't found a way to get around that yet Bring some greens into this chin area. I feel like there are a lot of cools that I'm seeing here. Yeah, this gray is the most handy color that I have. It just knocks down the saturation very well and it smooths out some of the textures. So I like that. Yeah. Let's work on the lips again. I keep moving away from it because I think I'm scared.
Does that work? I feel like no. <laughs> but that's what you're gonna get. Wow, we're almost an hour on this study already. And that is not including the uh, sketching portion. So time to pick up the pace. The ear is too, too much. I need to knock it down, knock it back. Knock it back, knock it back. Maybe also in color or in hue or no, in saturation. <laughs> knock it back. Okay. Yeah, this gray is the best. I like laying a lighter color over a darker color. I feel like it really helps smooth out some of the texture. Let's, let's fill out some of the white. I feel like there are too many distracting white areas. Too many distracting white areas. So like the teeth, for example, I, I, I'd like to see it knocked down a little bit. I don't knock it down a little much, but, but also bring out the dark in there. highlights that I'm seeing and then we'll go from there I think I always put like doing the best job I can do above time <laughs> because um, I always end up going over how how long I want to spend on things. I think I'm just really slow. I would like to be faster, but it doesn't seem to be something I'm capable of. So maybe I should embrace it. Okay, so I don't really want the focus to be about her ear, so I'm gonna... Try not to put so much into the ear. There, okay. No more, no more. Let's focus on getting these features to pop. Let's make sure the brow bone feels very structural so that the eye socket really feels like it's in place. Bring some darker values in here. I often neglect this area of the tear duct because in like cartoon form, you can get away with not really drawing that area. So I've gotten into a bad habit of like, not really giving much attention to that area there. And that's really the reason I do these studies is to just get a better understanding of the, the facial forms for me, the most important aspect of my work is often the faces, or uh, at least that's what I want to be the focal point of my work. So the face has to be banging. It has to look good. Because for my personal work, I work out of imagination 
and I work in a very cartoony, stylized uh, manner. But the uh, coloring style, the way I paint it is more based in realism. So I need to learn how to paint the real human features if I want to translate that onto my imagined characters. I used to have the hardest time with that until I started doing these studies. Because in school, I went to animation school and um, we did a lot of life drawing. We did like four years of it and I think, how many hours a week? I think it was something like at least six hours a week. Like it was a lot. <laughs> it was very intensive. And oftentimes after school, I would go and do X, we would call it extra life, like extra <laughs> life drawing. Um, we would do more life drawing on top of that. Okay, so I don't like how I made that eyeball too small, but I don't think I can really backtrack from that, but let's see. But yeah, as I was saying, we did a lot of life drawing, but we focused primarily on the gesture of the figure instead of the face. Like we never really did drawings more than 20 minutes. Our focus most of the time was just on getting the gesture of the figure. We didn't spend much time on the face. I felt we did caricature classes and we I think we did like a human head drawing class, but other than that, most of our efforts were put into the getting the overall gesture of the face. And so I feel like we never really learned how to paint the face. Maybe that is not to be expected in an animation course. And I guess that's okay, but. I felt very deprived. <laughs> Maybe in an illustration school or fine art school, it's something that would have been covered. I don't know. You tell me. So as shitty as these um, Stedler Norris Club pencil crayons are, uh, because they're so not pigmented. I actually do like using them in conjunction with something else because it allows you to have like a very light hand with how much you're putting down. And so I feel like it's, it's just easier to control. And um, when you just want like a light hint of color without the possibility of like potentially messing up everything. I think it's handy in those cases. I think what I want to see or what I want to do is smoothen out some of this area that got pretty textured. I need a very light colored pencil crayon to do that job. Oh, I think this one is it. I'm gonna have to pencil, uh, sharpen it a little bit. So let's, let's just put down a nice even layer all over. Actually, it's not really doing the job that I wanted it to do, but that's fine. There's, there's still room for us to go darker here. So I'm not too worried. How do I blend this out? Can I do it by my, <laughs> can I use my finger? No? Okay. All right, well, let's use, let's try this gray. Maybe it'll help. I just don't like how textured the forehead looks because forehead shouldn't be so textured. Bring some cool on this brow bone. I need to 
I'm gonna dial back some of the saturation. I think, I think it's a wee bit saturated all over. What else can I talk about, you guys, from the future? Anyone watching Outlander <laughs> on Netflix? I only watch it on Netflix, so um, I'm currently on whatever is the latest season on Netflix. And I think it's such a ridiculous show. <laughs> but um, I guess, I don't know, I, it was entertaining at a certain point, but I feel like it's not anymore for me, but I feel the need to at least like see it through because I've started watching it. But oh man, it's so ridiculous. Like I, I don't know why, but I find Claire to be a very unlikable character. <laughs> Maybe it's because I feel bad for Frank still. And I feel like Jamie has no death in his character. <laughs> like zero death. So I just find the two just completely unbearable. And now this newest season, focusing a lot on, I, well, I hope these aren't spoilers, but uh, their daughter, Brianna, she's in this season a lot. And the actress that plays her is so bad at acting, I can't stand it. Like I, I get secondhand embarrassment and I feel, I feel pain for the actors that have to do a scene with her. It just makes me cringe whenever I have to hear her or see her. Even, she's not even just like bad at delivering dialogue. She's just bad at all aspects of acting. I know it sounds so bad, but I'm sure a lot of people would agree. Like, she is not a good actor. Like, mm -mm. So that's been a little bit painful to watch. Ew, I like that. I, I said I wasn't gonna bring in green, but I brought in some greens and I'm digging it. Maybe I went a little bit too heavy on the like reds. And so I felt the need to tone that down a little bit with the green. All right, let's bring some, let's work on that nose. I feel like the nose has taken a bit of a back seat. I feel like I want it to be more popping. really want to feel that ball of the nose there so that we can feel the highlight as well. Does this look all right? It looks kind of weird. Yeah, I don't know. Something looks weird. Just grasping at straws here, y'all. Anyway, let's maybe not focus so much on the hair because the hair is not as important. Actually, it's kind of interesting. Maybe I'll just run with this. Maybe she can just have crazy multicolored hair. 
because why not? I feel like actually I do better when I'm being very mindless with the coloring. Sometimes it's just really tough to tell what color is what. That's why I'm putting so many colors down. Oh, I think I went a little too, a little too much there. A little too much right here. Yeah, tone that down. Yeah, I made them a bit more purpley than what I'm seeing, but I think the rest of the picture kind of calls for it. So I'm okay with that. Okay, what could I use to really darken this area? without making it look too much. I feel like when I'm working with these pencil crayons, like color theory kind of goes out the window. What I know about color theory anyway, I'm just kind of trying things out and then going from there. So that one, that line is not erasing as I would like, but maybe I can gray it out like that. I feel like I'm being a little bit hesitant with putting down some, some darker values. I'm being a little bit uh, apprehensive, but I shouldn't be, I should. Be more brave and just do it. So now let's try bringing some hard lines in and make make some more like stylistic choices instead of just rendering. Oh, I knew that might happen. You know, this purple, this deep purple is not, it's not really a color I would typically use, but I am liking how that is knocking that ear back. Like these really bright pinks and purples, not really a color I would typically use. Let's toss some hard edges back in here. St strengthen that chin a little bit. Okay, I like that. I feel like pencil crayons. It's really easy to get the saturation. It's it's actually harder for me to tone it down. I'm thinking like the colors are more saturated than they are, so I, I grab more of the pure colors and then I realize, oh, like I have to really gray that or um, brown it out a bit. Otherwise it's so saturated. Like I wasn't expecting to do such a neon-y piece again. Let's draw in the little hair wisps. If the paper can handle it, I feel like I went a little bit too heavy here already. There, that's probably enough. What else?
else can I do? What else can I do? What else? I'm just going as far as ah, I can possibly take it. Oh, actually, I'm gonna bring some of this light. Oh, not this one. This one. This one right in here. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. Maybe bring some texture into the hair. Whoa, looks so cool upside down. <laughs> Whoa. Am I finally ready for the freckles, finally? I feel like this area still needs to get darker. <laughs> Maybe if I just... I don't, know, I don't know what is the right color to do it. Oh, I think I'll stop there. All right, time for the freckles. I might need a sharper pencil for this, but I'll just test it out. Yeah, I need a, I need a sharper pencil. Let's see if this is whoop pigmented enough. I feel like there's definitely an art to doing freckles. They really have to follow the um, planes of the face properly. Otherwise they look just like airbrushed on. <laughs> Yeah, you have to have a very light touch with some of them. Otherwise it looks really off. Last finishing touches. Let's see. Maybe a thin Make it look like she's a glowing. Oh yeah. Can I do anything else from here to make it better? Maybe a little bit more jaw definition. Just a hint more. Okay, done. Stepping away, that's how it came out. I hope you guys like it. Yeah, and then I'm excited to fill this space out sometime soon. But not today, because it's already the end of the day for me. <laughs> Bye!